Hi guys, I'm Azra Khan and welcome to another video. In this grasshopper tutorial, I'm going to show you how to parametrically model a tower. We're going to start with the form of the tower and then I'll show you how to use the paneling tools plugin to populate the structure. If you want to follow along with this video, you can use the link in the description box below to download the files. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell so you don't miss any future videos. All right, let's begin. So the first thing I want to do is actually get the form of the tower down before I go ahead and do any paneling. So let's go back into Grasshopper. And over here, I'm going to start by just making an ellipse. So what you want to do is just pick, you know, a radius according to your own preference right now. So I'm working in feet, so maybe 60 feet by let's say 150 feet just for now. You can always change this later, right? These are sliders. You can always mess with these. Now I'm going to move these up and it seems like how many do I need? Maybe one at the base, maybe one to define this bulge in the middle and one at the top. So let's go ahead and move these, move the ellipses up in the Z direction. That's where we're going. And I'm going to merge three different values together since it's much easier to do it this way than trying to squeeze them in into one input over here. So the first one number is zero. And I'm just going to put that in the panel. That just tells me that the first ellipse doesn't move. It just stays down there. The second ellipse uh, is somewhere in the middle. I'm not sure where, but it's going to be somewhere in the middle. And the last one, I know this tower is actually s around 750 feet tall. I don't want to change that. So I'm going to leave the last one at 750. So that's basically the height of the tower. And then this one controls the ellipse in the middle. Now, of course, if I lofted these together, I'll just get, you know, a straight tower, right? I need that bulge. And to get that bulge, what I'm going to do is actually change the scale of these ellipse a little bit. So the, really the one I want to change, let's see, the top one looks a little smaller. It could be the same as the base, but definitely this one's larger. So let's mess around with that a bit. Let's go ahead and open up a scale component. Go ahead, put the geometry in scale, and you'll see that automatically it's scaling everything down by about half. And it's also moving them towards the origin. And that happens because if you hover over center, you see that the center of the scaling is the origin. You want to change that to the center of each ellipse. And the way you get the center of each ellipse, there's a couple of ways, but one of the easiest ways is just to do the area. And if you calculate the area of a shape, it'll give you the centroid. So instead of the center being the origin, now the center is the centroid. And you see that it shrinks each of those ellipses down according to its own center. All right, now you need the factor. So again, I'm just going to use the merge component. And maybe the first one just stays the same. So I'm just going to create a panel that says one. That means don't scale the first one. The second one we definitely want to scale. And maybe it increases, right? So I'm going to start a slider at one and go up to maybe three. So one dot dot 3.0 should give me a slider that makes this one go up and down. Now, of course, it's moving this one because we haven't given an input for that yet. Let's give another one for that. And let's say this one is zero uh, to let's say two, just to see what happens, right? So I can go smaller or bigger if I wanted to with the third one. Let me hide the original ellipse and the one I moved. So I'm just left with these three and let's loft them together. Okay, there we go. That's basically our tower. Obviously, it's not looking like the right shape. So that's where this comes in. You can start to mess around with these values um, and you can start to see that you could adjust the shape of the tower. Uh, you, we may have to go a little smaller with the first one actually. So I'm gonna copy this one over and say, you know what, let's scale that bottom one too. And let's move this point of the bulge down a little bit using this height. Okay, something like that. And let's leave it at that for now. We can, you know, do this for a while and just keep adjusting it. So I'm going to move on to the next step. Now that I have my loft, this is actually the shape of my tower, right? So I'm going to create a separate B rep right here just to remind myself where I've reached. And I'm, I'm going to call this tower shape. So now, what do I do next? Like, how do I actually get this grid from this tower? Well, you'll notice that if you're going to make this grid, it's going to be a good idea to line up the grid with the floors, right? You don't want to 
to just put a random grid on there. And I know that this grid stretches a little bit up here and it's a little more condensed. I'm not going to pay attention to that. I'm just going to try to get a nice even grid for this particular tutorial. And for that, I'm going to use the contour tool to first get the floors. So if you type in contour, there's a couple of them. I'm just choosing the first one here. Put the shape in, which is the tower, right? The point, leave that by alone. The direction, I'm going to slice this vertically, making slices in this direction like my mouse is showing. So I want to go up. So you want to go in the Z direction. And distance is just the height of the floor. So in this case, let's say it's double heighted. Let's say you have uh, maybe a 12 foot floor. Well, maybe let's go higher. Let's say it's a 20 foot floor. And there we go. So I slice it up and now I have all of these uh, contours that I get from slicing the tower, which look like this, right? A bunch of rings evenly spaced at 20 feet, which is really great because now this helps me divide them. Now, if I do a divide curve, I can actually divide this into any number I want like this, right? I'm going to actually increase the count here. Um, let's say, yeah, 48. Let's try that. And so now you see I'm starting to get this grid on the surface of the tower, right? Which is really great because if I look at this output here, this output where you see you have lists within lists, you see I have 38 lists right now. And in each of those lists, I have 48 points. This is exactly what a grid structure should look like. And if you have a grid structure and you've installed paneling tools, then all you have to do is turn this to a diamond grid. So if I do convert to diamond and put these points in here, and it doesn't work, like it's not working right now. It's like, hey, fail to convert to a diamond grid. Well, that's probably because you have a lot of redundancies in the pathway. So you see all those zeros in front of the paths. And at the end, you want to remove those zeros, any redundancies you want to get rid of. So what you could do is simplify this tree. And if I simplify it, you'll see that I get rid of those zeros. Right now, it just says 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's much easier for this component to read. And I go ahead and plug that in, and it should work and give me a diamond grid. So if I hide these two and just show the diamond grid, OK, it's hard to see right now. Like, is that a diamond grid? How do I even know? Well, the best way to figure out is just to panelize it. So if you go to Cellulate here, OK, and you bring Cellulate down, it's under Paneling Tools, and you put this in, you should see what that grid actually looks like. And you see that I have a nice, clean diamond grid. If I had put this in the very first one, when I first divided the curves, right, I should get a square grid. So you see there's a difference between this square grid and this one, which is a diamond grid. Now, it's a little hard to see. So what I'm going to do is actually make a clipping plane. And what this will do is cut our model in half and just allow us to see everything a lot easier. So again, here's our diamond grid. Works, works very nicely, and it's lined up with our floors that you see over here. So what's the next step? Now that I have this, I can actually color these meshes if I want. So I could do a preview mesh if I want. Right, This is one of the components you can download. And this way, I can just give a swatch that's more like a glass color. So maybe the face color is something that's a little more blue in color. Let's go there. And maybe it's a little transparent, so I can make that really light. And now you see on my tower, that's all my glass. right? But what about the structure? Right, so that's the next part. Like, how do you actually put structure onto this? Now, you could bake the curves and do a bunch of lofting and sweeping, but I'm going to show you a much easier way to do that, and that's using Panel 3D. So, if you use Morph 3D, this is going to be your friend when we're moving along with this. Now, just before I get to this, notice if first your grid is nice and tight, okay? And the way you can check that is if I disable this you'll see that I actually have a gap in the back over here. Okay, And that gap's happening because this grid starts somewhere and ends, and the computer doesn't understand that this actually needs to wrap around. So what you need to do is wrap your grid. And the way you can do that is just by typing wrap grids. And you want to wrap your original grid. So your original rectilinear grid, the square one, that's the one you want to wrap. Now it adds direction, either 0 or 1. And I honestly, I don't know which one. So I'm just going to enter 0 and which index most likely zero. Let's see what happens. Does that work? And no, that did not work. It actually went up and down. So let's change the zero in the direction to one. Let's go the other direction. And you see that kind of fixed the problem there. OK, so you see v without this, it looked like that. You had a big gap over here. But when I wrap it, it actually works a lot better. 
Okay, so now that I've done the wrapping, let me go ahead and work on the morph component. So let's bring this in here and let me get the clipping plane back on. You'll notice that the morph component actually needs two grids, right? We have one of those grids over here, which is this uh, diamond grid. So I'm gonna put that in here, but it needs another grid. So what it actually does, it, it makes a three-dimensional object. So it needs to know the outer bounds of the three-dimensional object. So I'm gonna use offset. If I type offset, you see there's a bunch of different options here, but one is called offset grid. And that's the one you wanna use right now. You put the grid in here, now it asks for a surface, like an actual surface to offset from. And we actually have that, which is the tower shape. So take the tower shape and put it in B-Rep. And now it's asking for the distance. Like how thick is this structure going to be? And if you look at the image, it may only be a few feet, right? So over here, for example, it looks pretty thick over here. Let's say it's three feet. So I'm gonna come over here and write three into distance and now it's offset the exact same grid from the surface three feet outwards, right? That can be our second grid. The other two things it really needs besides, you don't have to really worry about the other ones down here, but the two things you really need are pattern objects and bounding objects, okay? The computer needs to know what are you populating this grid with and how do I know what it's supposed to fit in? Because we're pretty lucky here that these are approximately the same size, but that's not always the case, right? Especially if you start using attractors. So if I come down here, you see that I've actually made a box. This is a, just a cube, right? And if I hide this cube, you'll see inside I have this kind of border over here, which is pretty thick, right? It's pretty thick coming outwards. And then there's a thinner one on the inside. So I'm gonna make a B rep here called the pattern objects. And these are the objects that I actually want to populate uh, on, in my model. So this one, these three, enter. And then I'm gonna show the cube again, okay? And go back to B-Rep and make sure that I select that and that's gonna be my bounds. So this goes under bounding objects and this goes under pattern objects. It's gonna take a second or two to run, but once it does, let's go ahead and see what the result looks like. And there, you see, like it's actually taken that little guy that we had in the bounding box and stretched it across and populated our entire grid with it. It's a little bit difficult to see over here, so I'm gonna hide it and actually use my preview B-Rep component. We should make it a lot easier to see. So if I zoom in over here, for example, here you see that it's taken that geometry right here and stretched it and placed it across the entire cell of this particular grid. Right? And that's exactly how you do this. I can hide those points because they get a little distracting. Right? And now I have my nice clean geometry. If I remove my clipping plane, here we go. This is our tower. Right? And there we go. That's, that's pretty much how you do it. Now you could use attractors if you wanted and start to stretch uh, this out. I'm going to make this solid so it's a little bit easier to see. There we go. You could, uh, of course, mess with these dimensions. I mean, there's a lot of options over here. You can change the height, you can change the shape now, but no matter what shape you have of the tower next, everything's gonna adapt and it's all parametric now. And that's how you do the Construction 999 Tower by Sordo Madalena. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and make sure that you download any files using the link in the description box below. And I'll see you guys next time.